life was that simple. <laughs> okay, and now we return to um, the uh, collaboration between Camilla Reeve and Steve White, uh, reading poems by Francis White from Dandelion Child. So please. Thank you. In this poem, Francis beautifully describes an evening out. But was it me that provided the disappointing ending? Right. Piano bar blues. Dizzy summer night, quenched with lager. Her eyes dreamy with piano bar blues. Moving aside their empty glasses, his arm brushed hers. Low lighting and soft cushions made her head swim. They slipped away into the moonlight music fading as they sauntered back under the larch trees along the water his hands in his pockets all the way home oh. <laughs> <coughs> most of the poems were written when francis was fit and well this poem however was written when she had become very disabled and is remembering herself before mnd sorry it's Camilla next, actually, so we have leapt ahead. That's all right, I was going to say. <laughs> okay, I think I told you earlier that she wrote a sequence called Angels. There are five poems in the sequence, I'm not going to read all of them. But if you can imagine the sort of man who doesn't want to know what's going on, he doesn't want messages from God or angels, he wants to be left alone to go to hell in his own way. She had this man in her mind, and she wrote a series of poems about angels trying to talk to him <coughs> and what happened next. And I find them absolutely mesmerizing. They were inspired by a Dutch writer whom she admired, but uh, these are very much Francis's own work. And the first one, Angel One. An angel kissed a man. The man wiped away the wet imprint, scowled and turned to the open window, raised a finger to the world. With a slam, he shut out the wind, stomped from the house to his white van, reversed into the road, gears crunching, and roared off to the building site. All day, he boasted to his mates, I thumped him one, I slapped her around a bit. But when they stopped for coffee or a smoke, the shape of the kiss persisted like a sore festering on his forehead. He scratched the place till it burned, like a brand cauterizing some pestilence seething underneath his woolen hat. So he goes through a number of encounters with the angel, and I'm going to read Angel 3. An angel brushed him with her wing to let him know she was there. He'd ignored her presence close behind till a fan of feathers swept lightly over the nape of his neck, cooled the air, making him shudder. He could do without this in the supermarket. It was starting to snow, so he was stocking up on bacon, sausages, tins of beans, soup, beer. She persisted, so he tried to appease her, adding angel cake, angel delight, crystallized Angelica to the wire basket. The checkout assistant examined the cake's layers. Pretty colors, she observed. Got a new girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Get on with it, he grunted. She pursed her lips and shook the acid green Angelica. Planning to poison someone? He scratched his neck roughly. Looks like an allergic rash, she said. You'd better get some antihistamines, medicines are on aisle B. <laughs> and I can recommend, if you get the book, read the poems in the certain order, and when you get to Angel 5, you'll know why I'm so excited by them. But this last poem that I'm going to read comes from a time when Frances had got to a point when she couldn't swallow her own saliva. You can imagine how that feels. And I went to see her, and I felt completely riven. What can you do for a friend? Mm -hmm. This poem is called Salt Cave. Salt water 
has entered the cave I inhabit. It pools around the rocks that are my floor, swirls like small oceans around each foothold. I can taste it on my lips, but mustn't drink it. The tang of it upon my tongue is the reminder I don't need that life has changed. Sometimes the waves surge and splash like serpents. Sometimes they lie quiet, let the rainwater in, softly lashing my cheeks. And as I mentioned, uh, the poem that I'm about to read was also written when Frances realised she was uh, ill with MND. And uh, this poem, The Ghost of My Former Self, was written um, while she, um, in a way remembering her life before MND. The ghost of my former self visits me often, sitting beside me, my Gemini twin, warm, laughing, chatty, and like the ghosts children create at Halloween. I tell her how I'm glad we walked through meadows, woods and streams, up mountains, clambering over boulders, risking the grey screen to lift ourselves above war, politics, arguments. She comments on how weak I've grown in the past year, how strange it is to find me quiet, <coughs> me who like to form and voice opinions, forcibly silenced. My ghost knows I can still think, sometimes write my views, but it's so slow. They used to say I was fast as a ferret down a hole. Mm -hmm. I'd like some of that speed now, but with this ghost beside me, I don't feel the end. She tells me I'll be able to visit the quick and the dead. very much for listening this afternoon to Francis White and special thanks to Patrick for supporting <coughs> Francis' poetry so generously yeah. for many. The one final tiny little poem, it's a haiku, it's called Coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> so we meet again, all seasons weave together, life's basket of light. Oh. Oh. Thank you very much, uh, Steve and Camilla. And um, it's lovely they brought a beautiful picture of Frances in her prime. Yeah. And um, you know, I looked at that at a few times, and Camilla and Steve were reading. I was just thinking, you know, she seems to be enjoying the afternoon. So uh, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's just been fantastic. And we have a little code into the afternoon because, um, you know, as I said before, Frances' uh, origins were in South Wales, and uh, Romney Thomas is featured this afternoon through. Husband Trevor, as his mayor, has also featured, and they were two very close friends who were, as I say, early adapters of women working together to put collectives of poetry together, collections of poetry together. But I'd like to ask Trevor to uh, end this beautiful afternoon with a song from Dylan Thomas's Under Wood, Eli Jenkins' song, Reverend Eli Jenkins. Trevor. <laughs> First of all, before I finish, just say, I don't apologise for my booming voice. <laughs> That's what you get. My father-in-law had a booming voice. Why can't I? Anyway. Every morning when I wake, dear Lord, a little prayer I make. Oh, please to keep thy lovely eye on all poor creatures born to die. And every evening at sundown, I ask a blessing on the town, for whether we last the night or no, I'm sure is always touch and go. We are not holy, bad or good, who live our lives under milk wood, and thou, I know, wilt be the first to see our best side, not our worst. 
Oh, let us see another day. Bless us all this night, I pray. And to the sun we all will bow and say goodbye, but just for now. Appropriate note to end on, but uh, just give you uh, after some applause and uh, for the open mic post. Bear with me while I read them all out, then give them a big round of applause, and we'll do the same for the feature folks. And you're free to disperse and celebrate Halloween, however, so you wish. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had Patrick Humane, Lee Yan, Robert Drury, Graham Buchan, Lantern <coughs> Carrier, Rosemary Norman, Anne Vaughan Williams, Max Fischel, Aidan Knott. Brown, P.R. Murray, Ardella Jones, Mark Salmon, Trevor Ellis, Kieran Buckley, Kate B. Hall, Frank Crocker, and John Hurley! Yay! Yeah! <laughs> fabulous Emile Serkin. And we've had Steve White and Camilla Reeve reading the poetry of Francis White. We're back on the 28th of November, so hope to see you then. Thank you.